morningly accurate. Hey guys, Patrick R with TAP TV. And I'm over here at Alamo Precision Rifles picking up my buddy Robert, because we're gonna head out today and shoot the Ruger Precision Rifle and 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, there was a huge fuss made about this rifle when it was introduced. And you know, realistically, at the time, there was nothing else out there that could touch it. With Precision Rifle becoming more and more popular, uh, thanks to rifles like this, that bring guys from the AR side of things on over to the precision rifle side of things, um, it really has made a huge difference in this particular segment of the industry. So a little bit about the gun. You've got a free float key mod handguard, which frankly, I wish it were an M-Lock. I would like it a lot better if it were. But uh, we have a 24 inch barrel with a, I believe, 1.8 twist. And then it is threaded for your standard 30 cal cans. Um, I've actually, got one of the Alamo precision rifle cans on here that he's going to bring with because mine is still in NFA jail. Um, we've got a Vortex Gen 1 Razor HD with uh, their awesome zero stop system and uh, it's in a Vortex mount. We're going to be shooting some Hornady 140 grain ELD match courtesy of our friends over at Ventura Munitions, which I want to thank them for uh, sending that over. But uh, it's a cool gun because right around 1200 bucks street, you get a gun that's capable of shooting out to a mile if you've got the uh, ammo worked up and you've got the facilities for it. We're only gonna be able to go to about 1200 today, maybe a little bit past depending on uh, how wet the ground is. Um, but it's more than capable of you know, really dropping the rounds in on target at that distance. At least that's what most people have been experiencing and I think we need to find out for ourselves because frankly shooting stuff is a whole lot of fun. But overall very very cool. It takes AI mags or AR-10 mags and it actually ships with two 10 round AR-10 mags. There is a downside to the AR-10 mag though and that is when you're out of ammo you can't really get past that mag follower. Uh, and I probably just broke something <laughs> doing that. But um, it's a really neat platform because, like I said, it brings guys from the AR side on over to the precision, precision rifle side. And with PRS really growing as a sport, it's something that you can go into your local gun store, drop $1,200 on a rifle, maybe another 1000 or two on a really good scope, and you know actually be competitive in just about any discipline. So let's get out to the range, check it out, and uh, hopefully it's all it's cracked up to be. The Ruger Precision Rifle really changed the game when it was introduced in 2015. No longer did you have to buy a three or four thousand hour precision rig to be effective at range. Now, I do have a couple of gripes, and one of those is the butt. And the stock, you see that little pointy end on the bottom of the stock, it makes it really tough to pull the rifle into your shoulder pocket. It does fold out of the way and is fully adjustable. Now, when you can fold it out of the way, that means you can remove the three lug bolt, which gives you a 60 degree bolt throw, making follow up shots just a touch faster. The enhanced version gets the new bolt shroud on it as well. Now, you also have an AR 15 style grip, which can be changed out for just about any AR grip on the market. An AR style safety that I really wish was ambidextrous and a pretty good trigger. The muzzle device, though, is really tough to get off, and you can see that the one on my gun is pretty chewed up. You also get a free float key mod rail, which again, I wish it was M-Lock. Uh, but overall, it's a really solid gun. We mounted a Vortex Razor HD Gen 1 to this on loan from Vortex. It's got that awesome zero stop system that really helps us keep everything zeroed when out on the range. I'd say that zeroed. That's gotta be a one inch group at a hundred.
So we zeroed the Ruger Precision Rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor last weekend, and now we're out here at my uh, buddy Ryan's place, and we've got a target set up about 500 yards. So we're gonna start there, and I've got Geo Ballistics up on my phone here. It's telling me that I need to dial 9.5 up. There's nine, and then 0.5. And then we need to dial 1.9 left. So we'll dial one, and we'll dial it right about 1.75 since, uh, well, let's do it two. So let's take our first shot with the root precision rifle at any distance. All right. Get a hit, but it's low. All right, so we had some fun at 500 yards and we've moved back to about 850 now. Um, we just checked it with the range finder and it was 848, so we'll pop that into Geoballistics. And it tells me I need to be dialing up 22.5 mil. There we go, dead center hit. Impact. All right. Impact. All right. Another one. I think I shot your dot off. Yeah. Whoops. This thing is grouping pretty nice, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Don't. You were about a full minute high on that one. I'm aiming at where the top dot was. Oh, okay, gotcha. About a half minute high then. All right, so, uh, what, six, seven rounds on target, uh, one right after the other? Not half bad. I think we need to try it further. Oh, that's more than accurate. So now we're at 1,031 yards, and we've done good so far, but uh, it's getting a little late, and the light's getting a little bit low, so let's see if we can get this. And then we'll step back to 1,200. Yep, impact. Yes. Oh. That was just high. There we go. Yep, that was an impact. Well, we got the elevation figured out. We got some weird stuff going on with the wind, but uh, I'm gonna put this into the ballistic calculator and true it, and then step back to 1,200. All right, guys, so we're gonna shoot at uh, 1,200 yards because the street price on these is right about 1,200 bucks, and I wanna see if we get about a buck a yard. So let's give it a shot. Impact. Yep. 
Another impact, hey. A miss there. It's okay. Another impact. All right, guys, so we're done with the Ruger Precision Rifle and 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, I thought it shot pretty well for a factory rifle with factory ammo. What do you I think thought you it shot phenomenal, actually. I mean, I would have loved to have had something like this 10 or 15 years ago when I started the long-range shooting thing, honestly. I mean, it just it still blows my mind that you can go buy something like this off the shelf uh, and, and absolutely come out here with factory ammo and sit down and run uh, and shoot as well as we did today. I oh, know. I mean, it, you know, a five-inch popper at yeah. 1200 yards yeah. is stupid I mean, like yeah. that shouldn't happen that shouldn't be something that people can buy for less than a couple thousand dollars sure absolutely because um, i mean you know as a custom rifle builder something like this kind of changes the game for your business it doesn't necessarily take business from you guys but it brings more people into the precision shooting community it does and that's why we welcome them i think we want to see products like this at the market because it does bring more people into into our game you know yeah. and that's the thing and eventually they're going to want to grow and step up from this a lot of folks will not everybody this is going to be just fine for some for a lot of people for a long time but yeah. most people want to progress and kind of and kind of move up through the ranks and uh, and this is i mean an awesome place to start that journey yes but there are some things that i don't like about yeah. it it's got a very militarized feel to it. It's very mechanical. It's not organic like um, a lot of the more traditionally stocked guns would be. Um, I also really don't like the stock on it, personally. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit uncomfortable uh, trying to hook in there and get some pressure back into your uh, shoulder pocket. It's not really something that's comfortable because it's got kind of a pointy thing on the end of it. Um, the trigger's good. I think the barrel's good. I hate key mod. I don't want it to, Ruger, make a, an M-Lock version, please, like tomorrow. Um, and I don't like that the AR-10 mags stop the bolt. Although, yeah. if you are a new shooter, <laughs> that is something that yeah. could be handy. Yeah, my only complaint with the thing, honestly, it's not a complaint, it is the fact that the bolt just does tend to run a little rough. You know, when you're trying to stay in position and do a follow-up shot, it kind of, it was throwing me off. That said, if I spend a day or two behind the rifle, yeah. I may overcome that and, and I think that, you know, that, that might stem from, you know, the, the rifles that you guys build sure. are really, really smooth. Like that 6.5 that we shot out here today as well. Um, that thing just runs like butter. Yeah. Whereas this thing is built on an assembly line and it's, I think it's pretty good for what it is. Absolutely. Um, given that it's, you know, been on the market for about three years now, four years, something like that. Uh, maybe a bit longer. Somebody will correct me in the comments. Anyhow, it is getting dark. We're going to head back to the shop and then uh, go home to our respective ladies because I don't want to be out in the field anymore.